So thank you for joining us to kick off this new series. I'm Barbara Thau, Senior Features Editor for Co. Good to be with you today. Our GROW session features entrepreneurs who have scaled their businesses, and they're here to share how they've turned into powerhouse brands, sharing their tips, their trials, and their wins with you. Um, today, we're going to take a look at the success of Hanif Brown, who is the founder and CEO of FitMatch. Uh, in 2019, Fitmatch's full body scanning studios debuted in Brookfield Malls, the largest, one of the largest mall developers in the country. So that's huge. Uh, they've now become a multi-million dollar business, and it's been a quite a four-year journey for them. I am so pleased to welcome founder and CEO of Fitmatch, Hanif Brown. Thank you for being here, Hanif. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. I'm much appreciated. Oh, so let's start out by telling us what precisely is FitMatch in terms of what the, the technology does. Absolutely. So we are a B2B, so a business to business technology platform where we enable brands to find and to recommend the best fitting products for their customers, for their shoppers. We leverage 3D technology, technology into smartphones, where customers can actually give their uh, information over to the brand in a pretty seamless way. And then we work with the brand to understand their inventory, their garment specs, et cetera, to provide that shopper with a personalized recommendation um, so they don't have to do any guesswork around finding the right size. I'm curious about before founding FitMatch, you started out uh, working in investment banking and private equity as a retail specialist, and you saw the inconvenience and the headaches shoppers face when returning clothes, but you had a personal um, attachment to this headache as you were experienced returning clothes for your mother. Um, I'm, I'd love to hear about how that played into your origin story as well as how it, you know, the, how it inspired the actual model, your business model. Yeah, absolutely. So out of school, I worked in investment banking, but specifically in retail. And then I worked in private equity um, for a firm that invests solely in retail businesses. And so private equity is pretty unique because you have to basically understand everything you can about a company in under a month and then value that company. So you have to understand how the company works, the competitors, the landscape, the challenges, the opportunities. So it's really a skill. Um, so whilst doing that for about eight or nine years, I kept coming across this issue of this inefficiency in the retail market. Whereas e-commerce was growing, so was the return um, issue. And so it's one thing to read about it on paper or in PLs or in spreadsheets. It's a whole other thing to actually see it happen in real time. My cousin thought it was a good idea to buy clothes for my mom. And so my mom, of course, non nothing fit. And so my mom turned to me and asked me to return it for her. And I, on the way to return it to the retailer who I won't name, I got stuck in traffic and I actually missed a meeting for work. Returns have become a huge issue in retail. So, and I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet here. Product returns have such become such an expense for brands amid the rise in online shopping that retail returns accounted for 761 billion in merchandise sales last year, according to the National Retail Federation. But what that says is that that 761 billion is really in lost sales, right? So I'm curious how uh, how FitMatch positions its business to solve a market problem. We are starting with saying, look, the old way of trying on so many clothes or the old way of guessing based on some obscure sizing chart, what if we provide you a better data-driven way to do it? And if we can cut that time down so we can make you order what you need to order in 10% of the time. And for the brands, we know that once they ship it to you, they're more confident. That will result in higher conversions because you're more confident about your purchase decision. You are more likely to stay with that brand if it fits. So it increases the long-term value of your purchase. And then of course, all of that leads to less returns. 
but it starts with the consumer experience. So, so you took a, a really interesting sort of side door route to getting into retail by first getting the attention and then buy in in a local market in the, in the Miami market from um, so you got from notable designers um, in Miami. I'm curious how that unfolded. Yeah, absolutely. So after private equity in New York, um, moved down to South Florida to start building out the, pro the, the project as well as the company um, to date. Um, before that, I actually did a short stint at Cornell in, um, in Ithaca, where I sort of learned um, a lot of the technology. So I had to sort of say, what's the, what's the most uh, unique way to sort of bring consumers in? And that also coupled with how am I going to convince brands to basically give me their data and their product? And so in Miami, I said, okay, well, I know consumers want newness. I know shoppers want the next thing that someone else doesn't wear. So I started contacting local designers and brands, but even then that was challenging, right? Because I said, they don't know me, they don't know the brand, they don't know Fitmatch, they don't know the technology. So I met someone who, um, and I just cold called her and tried to network with her who ran Miami Fashion Week, Beth. She ran Miami Fashion Week for several years. And so I convinced her, I said, hey, you have the air of these designers locally. How about you help me try to recruit them to this platform? So of course we're down in Miami and I was able to convince a leasing um, manager that ran one of Brookfield's largest properties in Coral Gables, Merrick Park, to give me some space. And so she did, she took a big bet. Um, she thought that the technology would appeal to a younger customer, a more tech savvy user than opening another, again, uh, you know, old retailer. And so she gave us a chance. And so the two came together, again, very coincidentally, as this story will continue to unfold. And the brands agreed through Beth, Brookfield agreed, through this leasing manager who had a vision for this and we opened our doors and you know the rest um, is sort of history. So then, then you had a light bulb moment uh, that prompted Fitmatch to, to pivot your, your business from a, um, I'll say B2B, a, B, a marketplace model, I think that's fair to say, to a, to a B2B model where you are working directly with brands. What, what, I'd love to hear more about that light bulb moment. So Brookfield actually caught wind of what we were doing in Coral Gables in South Florida and said, hey, like we're looking for tech savvy, next generation retail concepts that are about experiences. How about we roll this out or help you roll this out across the country? So that was a light bulb moment where we said, wow, like, we know the customer need is there. How about we now start partnering with larger retailers and brands to do it within their ecosystem? So I'm curious about how the pandemic accelerated Fitmatch's business. It was huge. Um, it was huge. I mean, overnight, a lot of the pitch that we made, a lot of the idea, people were like, wow, this is a no brainer. Um, you're talking about the fact that we were out there pitching, uh, never have to try and close again as our tagline. And then suddenly fitting rooms started to close. So people didn't have the opportunity to try on clothes. A lot of these businesses, their models changed overnight. Stores were being closed. E-commerce was growing. And so they now had one more returns, <laughs> quite frankly. And then two, a bigger need to pull in technology that was always five years out. I'm curious about um, funding. So, you know, what were the funding challenges that you faced and uh, and how did you tackle them? And I'm, I'm also adding, at, you know, you and I have discussed that the challenges for my, uh, minority funders, for minority entrepreneurs, I should say, and it's, you know, the statistics are there. Black and Latino entrepreneurs, for one, receive a mere 2.6% of the funding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I will say is, is it's really twofold. Firstly, our business requires capital. Um, we are building up and down the tech stack. 
We are relying on new technologies such as LiDAR and augmented reality and artificial intelligence. I wish, I wish those three things were inexpensive, but they are They're really fine. not inexpensive. And what I mean by that is it, it, you need talent, you need R&D, um, you need um, infrastructure developed. And so from a personal standpoint, from the FitMatch lens, our business does need capital before it starts to grow. Um, the second issue is obviously, as you brought out, I don't have a traditional, I'm not in the Silicon Valley scene. Um, I don't have uncles and aunts with a lot of you know money that I can say, hey, I'm starting a business. Could you give me you know half a million dollars? And by the way, you know, chances are you won't get back your money for sometimes ever and then sometimes for 10 years. Um, and obviously folks that look like me, we don't have that opportunity. So you'll hear in a second, of course, that a lot of our capital raising is from the brands themselves, not from these traditional VCs because they are aligned with us solving this, right? And that's super important in how you choose to raise. You can raise from people who are sort of financial engineers, as I sort of like to say, or you can raise from people who are pretty invested in your success, because if you figure it out, you help them on their business side as much as you give them a great return. I'm, I'm curious how the, how the, how the Savage and um, Fancy partnership, how you landed that? We struck a partnership with Cornell around the patent that was developed there by this individual, our chief data scientist. And so at the same time, we were now visible, Barbara, where retailers are asking us to come and do this for them. The pandemic is dragging on. Uh, brands that are focused on innovation are investing more into technology. So we opened a pop-up under Brookfield in LA, um, coincidentally, and Savage by Fenty is based in LA. And so we started to have conversations with them about their vision, what they anticipated, uh, where they want to take their brand, and they've always been at the cutting edge of innovation, from their inclusivity movements to how they market. And we felt that a partnership with them and a really deep and aligned one was the best way to sort of take our product and our technology to the next level. And so if you had to zero in on, on one insider tip, and, and you hinted at it already, for businesses looking for a game-changing partnership that's, you know, such as what you're doing with Savage and Fenty, um, and that would, that helps you, it's helping you scale and taking it the business to a new level. What is that? I always say it comes down to people, right? And even in our business as a B2B technology platform, we are having conversations with people, executives within brands. So you have to basically understand, and this is why I believe I'm uniquely positioned to run FitMatch, is because in private equity, I worked alongside operators. I know how they think. I know their challenges. I know why they don't like vendors at times and why visionaries within the organization love certain types of technologies. But the more connections you can have with people, the more you can understand why they want something like this is the better you are able to sort of pitch it to them and hone in on developing the product that suits their needs. What's next for fit match growth wise? Number one, and my final question, your best leadership tip today for entrepreneurs looking to embark on a business venture. Well, we have a lot of embedded growth just with our um, with our investors right now. Um, in fact, uh, Fabletics um, is also an investor in our company. That's a whole other category we're super excited about. We've already done some of our base work there, but that's to come as well. So not only Savage growing with our technology, Savage by Fenty growing with our technology, but Fabletics is to come and there's a pipeline after them that we're super excited about launching too. So just a lot more B2B brand partnerships on the horizon and a lot more products associated with those launches. Um, on the tip, I would come back to, I hate to sound like a broken record, people. I think a, pro, a process or a, an approach 
that tries to circumvent people and I am the complete opposite. I believe that if you find the right relationship, if you work hard on researching your end market and who is at the other side of the table, chances are the person you align with to get to that end goal is going to help you way more than all the hard work you could have done. And so as I look at our success to date, um, it has all come down to the people we've brought on, the people we, we have aligned with, and obviously the team that we've built. I want to thank you for this. I'm, it's been a delight. No, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for listening and asking such great questions. And as I said, we're super excited about what's to come.